The number one cause of death on the planet is due to waterborne diseases. 5,000 children a day die from waterborne diseases. So abundant clean water is a must. Conventional wastewater treatment requires large facilities, multiple stages, and can't keep up with the increasing amount of water we make dirty. But that's because they didn't have seaweed until now. Zeeweed uses cutting-edge membrane technology to clean wastewater faster, in a quarter of the space, and better than anything else around. As the world becomes increasingly water scarce, we're going to see water reuse as a major trend of the future. And Zeeweed is a great technology to enable that. With Zeeweed, what is flushed can eventually be reintroduced to the water system and reused. And drain water can actually be used as drinking water. We call it seaweed because it's very similar to seaweed. And seaweed uh, does a couple things. It moves naturally in the ocean, and this seaweed moves very naturally in uh, application underwater. At the same time, it acts as a cleansing feature of the water. And that uh, is a parallel to nature. If you can imitate nature, it seems to be the best solution in terms of uh, your technology. So it's a combination of high technology and imitating nature. Hello, my name is Gerald Harrison. I'm the plant manager for G Water and Process Technologies. Each membrane cassette is made up of 125,000 strands that are bundled up and suspended directly into the water that needs to be cleaned. Through the vacuum pressure, the water moves through the pores into the bore and is sucked up through, similar to a straw. Every strand of seaweed contains billions of microfine holes, nanopores, that allow water to be sucked in and keep particulates out. This remarkable filtration technology requires some remarkable manufacturing technology. The process starts with a polymer called PVDF. Take the PVDF, which is a polymer, it comes in pellets. And what we do is the pellets go into the solvent and it dissolves at a certain temperature. And then we add in some other inorganic materials, organic materials, and that's what formulates the recipe. And we end up with a, a, a material called dope, which is a thing that we use to form our fibers. This is what it looks like. It's like a molasses or honey. It's very, very, very thick. And uh, this is the starting point of making the membrane. The next step is to degas it. We have to get the air out, because if you don't, then it causes uh, issues with the fiber integrity, causes a very large holes in the fiber, which of course makes the fiber not usable. Which would mean the pathogens could get through. Once the gas is pulled out of the dope, the fibers will be shaped and molded with a bore fluid that fills each to create the tube structure. A liquid within a liquid, essentially. Then something amazing happens. The actual pores are created as the chemicals in the bore fluid bore through the dope, leaving a porous structure behind. It's not so much what's in the fiber, it's what comes out of the fiber which forms a pore structure. The pore structure on here is from 0.02 microns to 0.1 microns in, in diameter. The holes in the membrane are four times smaller than an HIV virus, 60 times smaller than E. coli bacteria, and about twice as thick as a cell membrane in the human body. So it filters just about everything, leaving amazingly clean water. So we block out bacteria, and we block out some viruses. Uh, we're up to uh, six log removal. Six log would be 99.9999, nine, or maybe more. Currently, we're manufacturing 15,000 square feet of membrane a day, which translates into probably 15 million square feet annually. And this has the ability to treat about a million and a half gallons per day of water. Uh, the overriding goal is to, uh, to provide clean drinking water and reusable water for, uh, for the world. Although some countries have come up with ways to treat sewage and turn it into drinking water, that's not allowed in the U.S., where wastewater is treated and returned to rivers. But with seaweed, that just might be possible. Countries such as Singapore that are really out in front of the curve, they're actually taking wastewater and recycling it to drinking water. Perhaps more than anything, the only thing missing for us is not a technology, but a mindset that we could successfully transform our own sewage to our life source. My name is Andreas Tsangaris. I'm the chief scientist of Plasco Energy Group. The project that Plasco Energy is handling is to take 75 tons per day of municipal waste and convert them to electricity 
without producing any pollution. This is Plasco, and their prototype facility is the first ever full-scale plasma gasification plant of its kind. Our main objective originally was to destroy the waste. But total destruction wasn't enough to satisfy Plasco. By using the technological equivalent of the power of lightning, their goal is to turn our waste problem into a profitable solution. We do not regard ourselves as a waste disposal company. That's way too narrow a designation for us. POSCO is an energy company. Waste to energy, a familiar goal, but the technological process is what makes it unique. Okay, we're gonna start firing the burners higher or harder, so you'll see some increased airflow. The process that converts uh, this waste into electricity is called plasma gasification. Plasma is sometimes called the fourth state of matter. The first state is a solid. Add heat to a solid and it becomes a liquid. Add heat to a liquid, it's converted into a gas. Add heat to a gas, it's converted to plasma. The sun is an ex the best example of a plasma. Lightning is another. They harness this lightning-like power by creating an electric arc between two electrodes. A small amount of gas is passed through those electrodes. The gas then ionizes and is transformed into plasma. The gas can reach temperatures of 5 to 10,000 Celsius. That's 4,000 degrees hotter than the outer layer of the sun. But even though it's exposed to intense heat, the waste is not incinerated. Plasma gasification works in the absence or near absence of oxygen. Uh, therefore, it's a process of decomposition and not of combustion. The superheated plasma has the unique power to obliterate any waste in its path, completely decomposing it into its elements. It can process any kind of waste, biodegradable or not. Dirty diapers, concrete, sludge, even hazardous biomedical waste, and transform it into useful and marketable elements. In order to be reacquainted with its elemental self, waste has to go on a unique plasmatic journey. The municipal waste travels up the blue screw conveyor and drops into the main chamber of the converter. There, the solid municipal waste is converted into what we would call a crude or raw synthetic gas that then travels up into the refining chamber where we use the plasma torches to convert it into the product quality gas, which is rich in carbon monoxide and hydrogen. My name is Alistair McLean. I'm the director of programs at Plasco Energy Group. What makes this approach revolutionary is how they organize the molecules into useful compounds after gasification occurs, the most important of which produces power. The cooled and cleaned syn gas travels through the yellow pipe to the five engines we see here. Each of these engines will produce just under a megawatt of power. Our sophisticated control system produces more power per ton of waste than any other waste conversion technology we know of. Once the process gets going, it powers itself. And in the future, this technology will be able to turn garbage into any fuel gas, even hydrogen to power your future car. Same basic ingredients with endless potential. Almost nothing goes to waste, even the solids. Here we use the plasma torch again to melt or vitrify any of the ash into a glass-like slag. This silicate slag can be sold on the open market and used for everything from roadbed aggregate, building materials, even jewelry. In a city like New York that spends $90 a ton to handle its garbage, the power and slag that is created by gasification could let the city actually earn $15 a ton. We're going to have about 1.3 kilograms per ton of waste of heavy metal and activated carbon. The only waste in this entire process. That's just over two-tenths of a percent away from zero waste. We are able to treat municipal solid waste in a much, much environmentally friendlier way than incineration can, or that uh, landfilling does, or that uh, adjacent uh, technologies do. But the technology is still being tested and approved, so it might still be a few years before plasma is powering your neighborhood. We're building new technology, and beyond that, the whole industry. We've taken this from a dream to a reality. One step closer to a world with zero waste, but there's still a ways to go.